you're new here, welcome to the channel, sis, okay? So for today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how I did my makeup, and I'm also going to be doing a little bit of talking, like a girl chat topic, how to get over a breakup, sis, because we've all been there, done that, we've all been cheated on, we've all been broken up with, or broken up with somebody, or whatever the case may be, okay? Y'all all know from my story time, girl, I've been there, done that. So if you want to know my tips and tricks on, well, not even tips and tricks, if you want to know my thoughts and opinions and my advice to you on how to deal with a breakup and how you get over it properly while I show you how I did my makeup, then keep on watching. But make sure you follow me here on YouTube and make sure you go follow me on Instagram because I know you're not following me on Instagram, sis. So head over there and make sure you follow me. But yeah, without further ado, let's just get into the video. Alrighty, you guys, so we're gonna get started. Gotta do this hair, honey, because she is a mess. So I'm just gonna split my hair down the middle as best as I can. And I'm gonna cut, I have my, I don't know if I'm gonna use my, um, my razor or if I wanna use my scissors. I'm gonna just take my scissors and just cut it, yeah. Oh, I like. It's a little, I'm going to add some layers in it, so hopefully that kind of like fixes the problem. Actually, I'm going to go in with my thinning shears first, and then I'm going to go in and like layer it. <laughs> yes, that's what I'm going to do. It's Vito, baby. Rock me, baby. Well, how do you like it? Yeah. Honestly, I can tell that you're frustrated. Been a minute since you dated. Trust me, I'm focused. You need to come, girl, I've noticed. You got a mouth with your mean ass. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can act like a bitch, but I know you don't mean that. I know you don't mean that. You just need some tears. You're afraid to speak your mind. Let me know. Let me know I know girls can never say they want it Girls can never say it now Shawty just tell me you want it Baby just let that shit out yeah. Here you go Big conversation, you hang up the phone you talk Okay, so my hair is pretty much done I'm gonna have to fix it later But right now I just kinda wanna You know, get to filming So I'm just gonna take some clips I got these clips from Target by the way and just kind of pull my hair back and I also need to like relay my lace over there because girl she lifting all right you guys so I don't know if you guys can tell that it's a different that it is a lot going on right now and it's completely different the lighting is different so I actually it's the next day and I was editing that footage and I ended up getting two of my lighting equipments that just came in if you watched my last video you know what I'm talking about and um, I decided to just refilm the video after the hair portion I left the hair portion the same everything else I'm gonna refilm because I just felt like it was just all over the place and I wasn't happy with it so I'm redoing it um, so first I'm just gonna pull my hair back I already went ahead and recurled it off camera because y'all seen me curl it the first time yeah I'm excited so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prime my skin this is the Laura Mercier pure canvas primer um, everything that I excuse me wow everything that i use i'll make sure that i link it down below i really have never done that like i don't link anything i just post my video and i want to be like a real influencer like i want to actually you know what i mean like be legit and everybody always asks me to list the product so uh, i'm gonna do it it just takes so much time and effort to list products but i guess that's my job right so I did my brows off camera because I feel like I suck at doing brows and I'm still learning how to do my brows. So I did them off camera, but once I get it down packed, I promise I'll show you guys. And um, on top, I'm gonna use my Pure Canvas Primer by Tatcha. I am obsessed with this stuff. This combination together is so good because you get the benefits of the primer and it's hydrating if you have dry skin like me. It's super hydrating, but also you get the benefit of the pore filling primer, basically the smooth canvas primer to smooth out any imperfections in your skin. It just makes everything look flawless. Like, okay, perfect. I need to shave my face. Like y'all probably can't tell, but I got like 
hella mustache. And then my sideburns, like my face is just all over the place. But I'm so excited to film because I haven't filmed in a couple of months, honey. Like a sit down video like this where I can talk to you. Like I haven't done that in months. So the thing I want to talk about today is how to get over a breakup, okay? So I've had to get over several breakups. I, girl, okay, my heart been broken, baby. My heart been broken the whole nine yards. I've been cheated on and took him back and still got cheated on. And then I had to realize, like, baby, you worth more than that. Sis, like, you the golden prize. You the winner in the relationship. You are the precious cargo, not this guy okay <laughs> so that's what i want to talk about today um but for foundation because i know when i'm talking i'm gonna be rambling but for foundation i'm gonna use the pat mcgrath uh labs foundation this is the skin fetish foundation in the shade medium 19. i used it yesterday for the first time loved it bomb um and i'm gonna use it today but i'm gonna use i use my tati beauty sponge yeah i'm gonna use this again so i'm gonna put I put four pumps on the back of my hand and I'm just going to dot this all over my face. But um, yeah, I want to talk about breakups. So I feel like, I'm not putting it on my forehead. I feel like anytime I've been through a breakup, the thing that has worked for me is actually taking time to deal with the breakup, if that makes sense. So like when you go through a breakup, a lot of the times the other person you will feel like they moved on really fast or, you know, they're talking to other people already and we've only been broken up for a couple days, blah, blah, blah. But in reality, a lot of the times, that's not a good thing. Like, that don't necessarily mean, says that he moved on and he found bigger and better. Like, that's not what that means. It just means that he hasn't dealt with the, the heartbreak of the relationship. You know what I mean? Like, like you ever be in a relationship with somebody and then y'all break up and then he already or she already is in a relationship, like, a couple days later and you're like like how is that possible i'm still over here crying over you i'm over here crying over this nigga and he got a whole check already like what like how is that possible and through my years and my experience i've learned that that just means that they haven't dealt with the problems that happened they haven't dealt with their emotions of the breakup or it really means they say he really just don't care like he don't care about nothing you got to say. He didn't care about the relationship. And he already had her on the side. Ugh. Nine times out of ten, sis, if you break up with somebody and they already dated somebody days afterwards, it's typically the person he told you not to worry about, okay? It's typically the person he told you not to worry about. Or he really just did not care about you. Like, the relationship wasn't what you thought it was. Um. So, the tip, number one tip that I want to give you guys is when you go through a breakup, deal with the breakup okay deal with the breakup don't try to break up with somebody and then find a rebound or like start clubbing and partying and going out and sleeping with a bunch of dudes like do not do not do not do that because one you're gonna feel like trash in the end okay you're gonna feel bad about yourself in the end you and then you're just gonna be adding bodies and you don't want to add bodies like that's not what you want don't let that nigga hurt you to the point that you start sleeping around sis and now you gotta tell somebody about these bodies oh no thank you no man <laughs> um so deal with the emotions deal with the problems deal with the relationship cry all you need to cry you know what i mean vent all you need to vent do everything that you need to do so that when you so that you can actually get over the relationship and actually find somebody because if you don't deal with the relationship and you just try to like start going out and, sh and and hanging out and finding dudes and going straight into a relationship after a heartbreak after a breakup you're going to take your problems from that breakup into your new relationship and that is not going to be good so i highly recommend to deal with the problems deal with whatever the issue was you know what i mean try to find closure and just deal with it like cry all you need to cry all that stuff because that's what's going to make you better for the next person or not even necessarily for the next person but that's what's going to make you a better you is making sure that you deal with your problems so that way you can actually move on and if you feel like you need therapy go to therapy like there's nothing wrong with that especially in the black community therapy is such a frowned upon thing um or an unspoken thing people don't really talk about therapy in the black community it's more like you know pray about it and move forward blah 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 um but yeah you know deal with the relationship deal with the problems 
deal with the breakup, all that stuff, so you can actually move on and actually be happy and not have to worry about it. I guarantee you, if you have a person that you broke up with and you look on their social media or whatever the case may be, because we've all stalked our ex's social media, right? You look on their social media and they already got a new girl, I guarantee you they have not dealt with the relationship that they just broke up from. Like I guarantee you they have not took time to get to know themselves, to get to love themselves again, to put themselves first again. Like they didn't do that. They just moved on and put it on the back burner. But when you decide that I'm going to deal with this breakup, I'm going to cry, I'm going to get all my tears out, I'm going to learn to love myself again, I'm going to learn to be by myself again, I'm going to learn to, you know what I mean, like do those things again. When you learn to do that, I guarantee you he going he gonna to try to come back crawling, sis, and you're going to be strong enough to say no. Because if you don't deal with it, you're not going to be strong enough to say no whenever he come back. So you got to deal with it. So you could be like, baby, I cried over you already. I did everything I needed to do. I accepted this breakup. I accepted this heartache. I did everything I needed to do. And now I'm over you. Like, over you. Like, we have nothing to talk about. Like, you could never. The person I am today, baby, you could never. Okay? She don't give you the time of day. Yesterday me may have. But this one, this new me, don't give you the time of day. So I always highly recommend dealing with it. So that way you can actually move forward. If you don't deal with your problems, you can't move forward in life. And that goes for anything, a breakup, a death, whatever. Like whatever it is, if you don't deal with it, you're not going to be able to move on. Another thing that I would say to do after you've been in a breakup is rebuild your self-esteem. Especially if you came from an abusive relationship. And it doesn't even have to be abuse in a physical standpoint but abuse comes in multiple different ways and a lot of people don't realize that abuse is emotional physical mental like there's so many forms of abuse so i highly recommend you taking the time out to rebuild your self-esteem and learning things about yourself and learning that you are beautiful you are confident you are strong you can do it you know what i mean like rebuilding your confidence in yourself and rebuilding who you are because a lot of the times People in relationships like to tear you down because they're unhappy with themselves. And when they tear you down, you start feeling a certain type of way. But if you rebuild yourself, there's no way that that can happen. You know what I mean? So I highly suggest taking the time out to rebuild your self-esteem. Hang around your girlfriends. Like, start getting dressed again. You know what I mean? Because a lot of times in relationships, you stop being who you are because either you get depressed, you get sad, you change because of them. Or whatever the case may be so i highly recommend rebuilding your self-esteem just starting from scratch just starting with i feel like you just have to be nice to yourself like we are so used to, we are so conditioned to being mean to ourselves and being like ew i look ugly or you know what i mean whatever the case may be we're just, we are so conditioned to do those things and say those things about ourselves so a part of growing your self-esteem is not talking bad about yourself like not talking down about yourself not saying ew i look ugly not saying anything like that you have to rebuild yourself and learn to talk about yourself in a positive way. Like something that I learned about myself and this isn't about a breakup necessarily, but this is about self-esteem. Oh, by the way, I just took the foundation stick by Anastasia in the shade Coco to uh, warm up my face a little bit. And now I'm going to go in with the, Nar the um, Hourglass in the shade Dune just to kind of correct a little bit. Um, but the thing that I've learned about myself and the thing that yeah, the thing that I've learned is I've learned that people always, like, compliment me all the time. And I'm always like, oh, thank you. Like, I hate this shirt. Like, oh, you think this shirt is cute, girl? Like, I freaking hate it. Like, you like my lace, girl? You can see it. Like, you know what I mean? I've always done that. And I'm learning to not do that anymore. Like, I don't know why we are so... I'm going to let my concealer sit. But I don't know. I just can't figure out why we are so conditioned to be to put ourselves down to make somebody else feel better right like if somebody else say like um say for example Susie said oh like I think I'm so fat today right and you're like oh me too like my stomach is bloated like my face is fat because I'm on my period blah 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 like you're saying that subconsciously to make the other person feel better even if you don't feel like that sometimes it just like comes out of your mouth and that's a part of like having low self-esteem and a part of like not being confident in who you are so it's really important that you decide like if somebody say thank you if somebody says if somebody says to me you look pretty today just say thank you even if you don't feel like you look pretty but sometimes telling people your insecurities can make you more self-conscious and have a low self-esteem because it's always something that somebody can use against you right so i used to always struggle with 
being skinny. And I told everybody, I told all of my family, I told all my friends, like, I hate being skinny, I hate being small, I'm too small, blah, blah, blah. And subconsciously, they kind of used that against me, like, oh, I don't know what you're complaining about, you skinny, like, you don't have these problems, or you can go into a store and fit anything, you know what I'm saying? And they weren't realizing that. I told them that in confidence because it was something that I didn't like about myself. So for you to say it, even if you're saying it, even if you don't mean it in a bad way, I've already expressed to you that it was a negative thing for me. So for you to say, oh, you skinny girl, you can fit those pants. Or you skinny, you can go into any store and shop and not have to worry about it. You can get an extra small and everything. Like that's not a compliment. So again, my self-esteem is going down. You get what I'm saying? So learn to keep your insecurities to yourself because not everybody has good intentions at heart. I'm telling you, not everybody has good intentions at heart. Not everybody, whatever. They don't care, basically. You know what I mean? So you have to... You can tell people your insecurities after they're no longer insecurities, but I just feel so passionate about keeping my insecurities to myself until I deal with it and until I'm okay with other people throwing it in my face. Because if I'm not okay and I tell somebody and they use it against me, now I'm even more insecure, if that makes sense. So I highly recommend um, building your, building your um, I can't even think of the word. I highly recommend rebuilding your self-esteem, taking this time from this breakup to rebuild yourself and rebuild your self-esteem and learn who you are and get to know yourself and all that good stuff. So that way, you know what I mean? You're working on yourself and you're you're becoming a better person. You're learning like, I can do this without him. Like, I don't need him. I don't need her, whatever the case may be. So I highly recommend working on your self-esteem and rebuilding your self-esteem after a breakup. It is so important because it's going to open you up to a lot of things. Like if you have low self-esteem, it prevents you from being in relationships. You might be missing out on your husband, girl, because you got low self-esteem, especially if you've been cheated on. You know what I mean? So you don't want to take any of that negative baggage into a relationship. So deal with it so you don't have to deal with it later on in life. You don't want to look back five years from now and be like, dang, I'm still dealing with this. Like, I'm, I thought I was over it. But you never dealt with the problem. So how can you be over it? So definitely work on building your self-esteem after a relationship. It is so, so, so important. So important. I love this concealer like oh <laughs> it just looks so freaking good uh, what is this in my brows oh, it looks so good and the skin honey get into the skin look at that like my skin is popping oh my god I at first I didn't think I was gonna like this um Pat McGrath Labs foundation because I just thought it was like watery and I'm like there's no way this is gonna give me coverage like it's about to give me your skin but better like no sis coverage i love this uh, that foundation so now for my next concealer i'm going to use the kevin Kwan concealer and this is in the shade sx08 so i'm going to use this all over my face i need to figure out my next topic okay the next topic the next part of dealing with a breakup is avoiding a rebound right so a lot of times when people break up with somebody they try to fulfill that void like there's a void or there's an unhappiness that they're going through so they're trying to um, if I can find my brush, I can talk. One second. Did I put it back in my drawer? I did put it in my drawer. Okay, so a lot of times when you don't deal with the problems and you don't deal with your breakup, you typically end up going down the wrong path of whether it's sleeping with a bunch of people, whether it is drinking, whether it's clubbing, whether it's whatever, whether it's a shopping addiction, any of those things will prevent you from dealing with it and will cause you to have a rebound. And that's typically not what you want. You want you don't want to get a rebound because it's just it's not going to fulfill anything. A lot of girls think that I'm going to go out and I'm going to sleep with this guy and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and it's going to make me feel better. My problems are going to be solved. And that's not the case at all. If anything, it's going to make you have more problems because you're going to feel like you basically just going to feel like that's another that's another nigga that just used me. You know what I mean? Like that's another guy that used me for what he wanted or whatever the case may be. And then another thing that what I've learned, even from talking from girlfriends, talking from my sister, whatever the case may be, you typically get attached to that person. You know what I mean? So imagine breaking up with somebody and then you sleep with them and then you get attached to them. And now you acting crazy because you attached to them and they like, whoa like it's not that deep it was a one night stand blah 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 whatever the case may be so you have to deal with it because you're gonna start reflecting your your problems onto somebody else and that's not what you want to do 
You want to deal with it so the next time you do get intimate with somebody or the next time you find a partner, you want to make sure that you can give it your all without feeling insecure, without feeling whatever type of way, without bringing your negatives into the relationship from your, your past relationship. Yeah, so you want to avoid having um, a rebound because it does you no good. It actually hurts you more in the long run because you end up attaching yourself to somebody else when you have problems. You still haven't figured out your problems. You still haven't dealt with your insecurities. You still haven't dealt with your daddy issues. You haven't dealt with whatever. And I know I said that I'm talking about how to get over a breakup, but this is just how to deal with life in general. You can apply a lot of these um, you can apply a lot of this information to a lot of areas in your life. So you want to make sure you are not attaching yourself to somebody else when you are still battling your demons, when you're still dealing with your problems. Because now, since you just going to give your problems to him, he going to think you crazy because he like, where is this coming from? Like, I ain't do nothing, blah, blah, blah. But it's just a reflection of your past relationship that you put onto your rebound. Like, you probably slept with this dude and you don't even fucking like him. Oh, I'm sorry. You don't even like him. Like, you don't like him. You don't want to be with him. You nothing. It's just you are so broken. You are so hurt. You are so heartbroken that you will do anything to fill the void of being heartbroken. To fill the void of, to feel, to fill the void of feeling down. You know what I'm saying? Like, sometimes you're like, I just want to do anything to make this pain stop. Like, I just want to do anything to make this pain stop. And sure, the pain may stop for 20, 30 minutes of, you know, whatever you deal with that person or whatever, the pain may stop then, but what's going to happen when he leave your life? Or what's going to happen if things don't work out between you and him and now you're back to being in pain again? You get what I'm saying? So that's why it's important to not get a rebound because you don't want to give anybody else your problems. Like, you already know how bad you feel, so why give that to somebody else? So you have to be strong enough to realize, I'm hurting right now, I'm not making good decisions, I have poor judgment, let me just chill let me sit back let me call a girlfriend and tell her like i'm about to x y and z because i'm so broken like i just need to talk i just need to something you get what i'm saying and that's why sometimes i feel like it can be important to um get a therapist because a therapist can help you recognize those signs and recognize the path that you're going down because a lot of the times you don't even realize that you're going down a certain path until after you've already came out on the other side and you're like dang like i really was spazzing like i really was going through it you don't even realize it because you were so broken and so hurt during that time. You just did whatever you could to ease the pain. So do not, do not, do not get a rebound. I know it's easier said than done, but at all costs, try to avoid um, finding a rebound. Try to avoid finding somebody to fill that void. You should try to fill that void on your own so that way you will never need nobody. Like you don't ever want to feel like I feel empty because I'm not in a relationship. I feel empty because I don't have the newest shoes, the newest clothes, the newest car. Like, I feel empty because of those things. Try to fill your stuff with things that are not monetary. Try to fill your fill your, your body. Try to feed your soul with things that can't be replaced. Like, if you love yourself the way you're supposed to, no man can make you feel less than. Nobody can make you feel lonely. Like, you won't feel lonely because you're not in a relationship or whatever the case may be. So you have to really work on your self-esteem, work on dealing with your problems, and work on not putting your problems on other people and not getting a rebound. And I'm gonna blend out my concealer now because I just be talking, y'all. But honestly, I wish somebody would've told me this stuff when I was um, going through my issues and going through my breakups because, y'all, I did a lot of stuff. Like, I was just dealing, I was just coping with what I knew how to do. Like. I was just going through the motions and I was so hurt that I just did anything I could to ease the pain, whether that just whatever that may have been for me. You know what I mean? I'm not going to go too much in depth because some things I just prefer to keep personal. So, yeah, I highly recommend dealing with your problems because if you don't deal with them, they're going to put you in situations that you never thought you would be in. They're going to make you go through stuff and do stuff that you think about now. You're like, I'm so stupid. Like, why would I ever do that? Like, why did I do that? And it's because depression. It's because you haven't dealt with your problems. It's because you don't know any other way to cope other than to act out and lash out. So please make sure you deal with your problems and make sure that you are doing what you need to do for yourself and for your future, if that makes sense. When I was going through my breakups, I feel like another thing that helped me was going through a social media detox. And what that means, if you don't know what a social, de a social media detox is, it's basically just getting off social media, getting off the internet in general, getting off his Instagram, sis, get off his Facebook, stop stalking him, you know what I mean? Like, that's a social media detox, just getting away from all the happy couples, all the couples who life look like they got their life together, they got their crap together, like, 
log off and deal with your problems because it's only going to make you feel worse and i can say that from experience like especially for me with this whole um with this whole youtube thing there's been times that i'm like looking at my favorite youtubers and i'm looking at their life on instagram and then i just feel worthless like i just feel like dang like they got everything I want, and I feel like I'm working hard doing this, blah, blah, blah. And for some reason, I still can't get to where they are. You know what I mean? Like, it kind of turns into jealousy. And that's not a good thing. Like, you shouldn't be jealous of nobody at all. Like, and it's easier said than done. Like, it's okay sometimes to be like, oh, like, I wish I had that, blah, blah, blah. Like, that's fine. But when you really start feeling bad about your life because of somebody else's life on social media, since it's time to take a step back and rethink your life and just work on you because... It should never be like that. Like nobody on social media should make you feel bad about yourself or have low self-esteem or anything like that. And when that does happen, you need to take a step back and reevaluate. So taking a taking a detox from social media can really help you get over whatever it is that you're going through in life because you're gonna feel grounded. You're not gonna be watching people on Instagram who have problems because let's be realistic. People on Instagram don't post about the bad things that happen to them in their life. Like Instagram is the best parts of a person's life like you don't get on instagram and see somebody struggling and they could pay their bills this month blah 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 like you don't get on instagram and see that you see money cars clothes bags shoes houses like you see all that stuff but you don't know what's going on in their real life it is what it is so stop comparing your life to people on social media take a social media detox because i know you probably looked at your your man your ex man's page and i know you probably seen like Oh, he living his best life. He doing the best, blah, blah, blah. Like, he doing better without me. But sis, realistically, he probably not doing that good without you. He know you watching his stuff. He know you looking at his story. So he about to put on the front because he know you hurt. He like, yeah, I know she hurt. Like, I know I broke her heart. So I'm about to basically put on a show on Instagram because I know she watching. You get what I'm saying? So he's just trying to make you feel even worse than you are. So it's good to take a social media detox so you can deal with your problems. At least while you deal with your problems and accept the fact that you're going through a breakup and you're hurting. So that way you're not lashing out on social media. So that's just my spiel. I highly recommend it. Um, it's really helped me out a lot. I take social media detoxes all the time, especially when I start feeling depressed. I'm off social media because the main reason that I get depressed is a lack of being successful for me. Now, success is defined in so many different ways by so many different people, but for me, I, I define my success by YouTube at the moment because that's something that I'm really passionate about and I'm really working hard on my YouTube channel. So when I am not doing good or a video I posted is not doing good, my, my um, subscribers are like stagnant right now, like I'm not gaining any subscribers, whatever, I get really depressed about that because it's like, Dang, like I'm working hard. Like I invested in all this equipment. I'm doing everything. I post the same type of video she posted and I'm still not getting no views. Like my number is still not going up. So when that happens for me, I take a social media detox. I soak in it for about a day and then I'm like, sis, you got to get over it. You got to move past it. You got to, it is what it is. Like you can't compare your life to the next girl, baby, because you don't know what she going through in her life. You don't know what she did to get there. You don't know why God blessed her before blessing you. Like you never know. Okay, so social media detox is a must. I'm setting my face with my hourglass translucent powder. I really love this powder because it just makes your skin look so freaking airbrushed. Oh, it's so good. And I mean, it's expensive. This powder is like $50, but in my opinion, I think that it is worth it because it just gives you such a flawless finish. But I also really love the um, Le Mercier translucent powder as well. And I'm going to use that to set the rest of my face. Um, but yeah, I really just wanted to say, just deal with your problems and deal with your emotions. Because if you don't, it's going to come back and you're not going to realize it. Like you're going to start having to have, you're going to have problems that you didn't realize that you had. Or you're going to start being like, dang, why am I going through this? Or why always me? Just deal with your problems, sis, so you can move on with your life. You want to make sure you're dealing with the problems now so you don't have to deal with them later that is the best advice that i can give you honestly and just don't feel stupid you know what i mean don't feel stupid for having problems don't feel stupid for going through what it is that you're going through because people go through stuff all the time and don't feel like you're alone like don't isolate yourself something that i did going through breakups and stuff like that is i isolated myself from where's my browns oh i isolated myself from my family from my friends like 
sometimes I didn't want to talk, I didn't want to get out of bed, it was just a whole lot. And sometimes that's okay to do that for a day or whatever, I mean, you know what I mean? Because everybody have bad days, but at some point you got to pick yourself up and you got to keep it moving, baby, like keep it moving and just move on. Like realize that things happen, life happens, and you just got to go with the flow, like and that's easier said than done because I'm definitely not a go with the flow type of person. Like, I can't just go with the flow. You know what I mean? I'm using my NARS bronzer. This is in the shade um, Laguna. It's not, I mean, I feel like it's doing the job, but it's not dark enough. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy, but I just feel like it's not warming me up enough. I feel like it's like a little bit darker than my skin, but I'm not 100% sure. So I don't know. So. Yeah, just make sure you're dealing with your problems. You don't want to take that into your new relationship or whatever. So deal with your problems, sis, and you're going to be good. I think that's so pretty. Wow. It's a little bit more extravagant than I wanted. I wanted something very subtle, but I'm here for it. I think that's cute. So I'm going to do the other eye, and then I'll be right back. Alrighty, so I went ahead and did my um, lashes off camera. I just applied some Demi Wispies and now I'm just going to kind of comb through my hair with my fingers. I'm definitely probably going to have to recurl these front pieces. Okay, so I have this lip liner by Patrick Ta, but I don't know how you're supposed to use this. Um, this is in the shade uh oh she's single i thought it would have been darker than this but i think it's a little too close to my lip color so no it's fine it's not as dark as i thought it was gonna be i should have got gone with my first option and got the other one but this one's fine i always forget to um spray my face so i'm gonna go in with my huda beauty setting spray this is the original one that she came out with. I didn't like it at first, but now that I'm in Japan and it's waterproof and it, oh, I just took it out the packaging. Look, I hope it still works. Wow, I'm gonna be very disappointed if this doesn't work. Like, very disappointed. Okay, it still works. Oh, wait, I didn't put highlighter on. <gasps> what? Okay, for highlight, I'm going to go in with my Marc Jacobs highlighter. In the This is um, Guilty. In the center of my lips, I'm going to go in with Patrick Tosh. She's unapologetic. Just to give me like a little bit of pout. But I, I like my natural lip just the way it is. So I don't know if I want to put this, actually. Hmm. I'll put a little bit. And then I'm gonna just take my finger. Yeah, that's cute. And then on top of that, I'm gonna go in with She's Expensive by Patrick Ta. Wow. She's expensive. That's how I feel right now. I feel so expensive. Alrighty guys, well that is gonna conclude today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was like my first girl chat video on the channel and I hope you guys enjoyed it. So if you made it this far, sis, I know you forgot to subscribe like I told you in the beginning. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me and then head over to my Instagram and follow me on Instagram as well. Um, I'm here for it. I'm here for the face. I'm here for the lace, okay? Like, lace wear. Wear lace. What well, is? <laughs> um, but yeah, I really had so much fun filming this video. Like, I just look so pretty. I just can't stop looking at myself. I know. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Subscribe down below. Watch another video. Follow me on Instagram. And I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.